guys so this is the youtube video that goes along with instagram posts that i made back at the beginning of december i know i promised a, po a youtube video when i made that post and then life has happened and i'm making it today so uh, for all of you that were waiting for that here it is but anyways this video is going to be about um, the trendelenburg gate and how I've been seeing it in horses and what that has to do with identifying hind end lameness um, in horses and kind of uh, how we look at that and what that means for the rehab process. So the video that I showed you in the very beginning of this clip uh, is the horse we were talking about in that post. But before we get to her, I figure we'll go over the very basics of hind limb lameness, how we look for it, uh, what the terminology kind of is, all that stuff. So if you haven't watched my video on hind limb lameness already, I have one, so I'll try to link it here. So you can go look at that now first uh, and then come back here and we'll talk a little bit more in depth. Uh, but if you have watched that video already, we'll just roll on. So if you've listened to me talk about hind limb lameness before, you'll know that I tend to talk about the hip drop um, for how I identify which side is the lame side. If you've listened to other people, they may talk about a hip hike. That doesn't mean they're wrong or I'm wrong. Um, it just kind of depends on what phase of the stride you're focusing on. And in all honesty, it's the combination of the hike and drop that really tells us uh, which side is the lame side. So I know that is endlessly confusing and that's part of why hindland lamenesses I think are so hard for people to identify and kind of diagnose and tease out. So I'm hoping that this video will help make it a little bit less confusing. So when we're talking about the hip hike, we're watching the pelvis as the horse walks away from us and we're looking to see does one hip lift higher than the other as the horse is uh, taking a stride. So if a horse is hiking their hip, they're trying to get more weight off of that leg, theoretically, uh, so they're lifting it up higher, or they may not be able to flex the joints of that leg to clear the ground as easily, so they may be hiking that hip uh, through their pelvis higher so that they can more easily swing that leg through uh, without having to flex either the hock or the stifle quite as much. Okay, so then the hip drop is the opposite of a hip hike. Uh, if you're looking at the horse walking away and you see one hip drop lower than the other side, then we're going to see the hip drop. So again, this could be kind of a compensatory strategy from pain, trying not to... Uh, either use muscles that are painful or flex joints that are painful. And then another aspect of a hip drop, I think is, this is what gets to this Trendelenburg gait thing, is that, so those muscles that help keep the pelvis stable during the gait, they work on the opposite leg than the side that they're on. So the left side of the horse's glute muscles, those are stabilizing the pelvis while the right leg is taking a step and then the right side is stabilizing as the left leg is taking a step so if we're seeing a hip drop on the right it could be because those muscles on the left aren't doing a very good job of stabilizing they're too weak or they're painful or something's going on so ultimately what it comes down to when we're trying to decide which side is the lame side um, is the total excursion. So that's the sum of the, you know, the hike and the drop together. So as a horse is walking, there's a normal amount of hip hike and drop throughout uh, the horse's stride. And that's going to be pretty individual to different horses and different horse breeds. And I don't know that there's been any studies done to determine kind of what normal pelvic motion exactly would be. And I don't know that that matters because what we can do is compare the horse side to side and look at differences, you know, between that horse and kind of see what his normal is. And a great thing to do is to look at your horse when you know he's sound and see, 
you know, what his normal is so that if anything happens, you can compare back and see if one side is now different than the other. But a lot of us can't do that. So as long as the horse isn't lame on both hinds, which does happen, but um, as long as we're looking at a unilateral lameness, we can compare the horse to himself and kind of tell that way uh, which side is affected. All right, the last thing before we look at this on our actual horse example uh, is talking specifically about the Trendelenburg gait, what this is in people, um, and how it can apply to horse. So in people, as we walk, our pelvis should remain relatively neutral throughout our gait cycle because we stand upright um, and horses are on all fours. So it's just a little bit different there. But when a human has a Trendelenburg gait, that's that second picture, you can see how his left hip is dropping and that means that his right side is the affected side. That's a side that's too weak, it can't stabilize, um, so the left side drops. Now, there's also a thing in humans called the compensated Trendelenburg. Let's just make it like a tiny bit more complicated. That's when the person compensates for their weakness and keeps their pelvis a little more neutral, but they're leaning away with their trunk in order to make that happen. So you'll see that person is leaning over their right side to keep the pelvis neutral because they don't have the glute strength to keep the pelvis neutral. So I don't know that that's something that happens in horses. Uh, I'm not ruling it out, uh, but uh, based on how horse anatomy and human anatomy is different, I'm not sure yet that that's a thing that we would see in a horse. But that's what Trendelenburg gait is. If you're still a little foggy on that or wanna see some examples, I don't have any videos of a human right now, but YouTube is full of them. So I would pause this, go look at um, a YouTube video, just search Trendelenburg gate and there's tons. Um, and hopefully that will clear it up for you. But uh, so that's Trendelenburg gate. So let's look at this little mare and what's going on with her. So I'm gonna let this uh, kind of play through on loop as I talk over it. So if you've seen the Instagram post, you already know that this mare is lame on the left side. It's left stifle. She had an accident where she skidded through the mud and slammed into a post on the barn and actually broke the post uh, and just was understandably quite sore afterwards. Luckily, no uh, major injuries there. But what a lot of folks were seeing on my post was this right hip drop. Seems pretty dramatic compared to the left uh, when you first watch it. And so what I'll do is I'll put up some pictures that have angles drawn on them and we'll talk through a little bit why it's not the right side that's affected uh, and kind of why that hip drop might be occurring. So I'll just let this finish playing through one more time so you can guys can really watch it. And then we will start with looking at her right side first. So the right side, we can see um, this is when she first is taking that right foot off the ground. Uh, we see a pretty significant drop in that hip. And that's what a lot of people were saying, oh, the right side must be the lame side. And that's totally understandable. Um, if I didn't know it was her left side, I might have thought the same thing just by, you know, casual observation. But so we have 29 degrees and I just kind of arbitrarily took the point of the hip as where I'm measuring my angle from. So there's some amount of degrees there that is just like what her pelvis is as she's standing there. So 29 degrees is kind of an arbitrary figure, but it helps us for comparison's sake. Uh, so hopefully that makes sense. But anyways, we start with 29 degrees on this right side. And then our next picture is going to be uh, where she is in mid stance. So she's got her right hoof kind of next to her left as she's swinging it through. And here we're up to a 23 degree measurement. So we've had six degrees of movement so far. And then next we're gonna look at her in terminal stance where she's swung that right leg through all the way and it's about to touch the ground. And you can see here, she stays steady at that 23 degree number. So no additional change between mid stance and her terminal stance. 
So we have six degrees of total movement, uh, you know, excursion through her pelvis throughout her gait cycle on the right side. So now we'll take a peek at the left side. So as she first takes that left foot off the ground, her hip drop number is 19 uh, based on our little measurement here. So that's 10 degrees different from the right. The right dropped a lot more than the left. Um, when she initially begins her swing phase. So as we come in through to our middle portion of our swing phase where she's got her feet next to each other, uh, we see that she's got a 13 degree measurement. So that is actually, you know, if you're thinking about amount of excursion, that's the same as the right. She's got six degrees of change as she's coming from where her toe first leaves the ground to where it's halfway through her swing phase on both sides. So, you know, we could maybe guess that that's just her normal amount of motion, although we had a much bigger hip drop on that right side. But then as she comes through to her, the end of her swing phase and that left leg hits the ground, she drops again significantly to 21 degrees. So if you remember on the right side, she stayed steady 23 degrees from the middle of her swing phase to where that foot hit the ground. But on, on this left side, she loses quite a bit of stability and that hip drops again. So we end up with, what is that? Um, six plus seven, 13 degrees of, of overall excursion on the left side and we only had six degrees of overall excursion on the right side. So when I said earlier that, you know, hip drop, hip hike, it's really both. That's how we can say, you know, it's total amount of excursion rule still holds true and identifying which side is the lame side because our left side was not as obvious of a drop, but it was more excursion overall. And that is, you know, definitively the lame side because we know this mare had a traumatic accident. But uh, that Trendelenburg gait where she's losing stability in her left glute muscles that causes that right leg to drop so significantly um, when she has to put all of her weight on her left leg, that's what's causing that big drop that kind of at first glance makes you think, oh, it's the right side that's lame. So hopefully watching this video through a couple more times kind of helps clarify a little bit of that. Um, I know this gets like, a little overwhelming and confusing but the good news is like the way I drew these angles I just used the Apple photo editing on my phone and there's a ruler on there and you can measure angles you know right on your phone so that's actually a really cool feature um, and something you guys can totally do with your own horses at home uh, for free so that if you have an iPhone I don't know about uh, whatever, Android products and stuff, but um, I'm sure they have something comparable. So hopefully that makes sense. If you have questions, if it's not clear, feel free to leave me a comment uh, below and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And otherwise, thank you guys for watching and I'm sure I'll come out with something else soon to talk about. <laughs> uh, until then, Happy New Year, and I'll see y'all uh, in 2021.